Welcome to CAFE Foundation's 13th Annual Electric Aircraft Symposium. My name's Yolanka Wolf. I'm the CAFE Foundation's Executive Director. I want to thank CAFE board members Jeff Heimer, Bruno Mombrini, and Todd Hodges um, for being here and all of their help uh, to set this up. I also want to thank John Palmer Lee, who is also a board member. He's not here, but all of the back end stuff on the website and the registration, everything is his bailiwick, and he's been phenomenal uh, handling that. And I want to thank Dean Sickler. I think many of you know Dean or read his columns. He uh, does an amazing job writing our blog for us, and we really appreciate the work that he does. Finally, Last and certainly not least, I want to thank Vertical Flight Society. Last year, Vertical Flight Society came in as a, sp as a sponsor to do the video, uh, videography. This year, we have formed a full-on partnership to, to going forward to put on this conference. Um, uh, Mike and Ken have been invaluable over the last couple of months helping me uh, to organize this conference. I'm really excited going forward about doing this with them. And Warren and his team are, have done a great job on the videography. So I really appreciate that. Uh, please give Vertical Flight Society a hand. I'm going to take a couple minutes to tell you about CAFE Foundation. Um, a friend told me I should open with a joke. Um, unfortunately, the story I have is not a joke. It's true. One of our attendees just ran and said, I can't stay. I just learned that the roof blew off of my house and my dogs are running everywhere. So I really appreciate those of you who are able to make it. Um, I know a lot of you had some major travel struggles, and I hope everybody's roofs are still on their houses. CAFE stands for the Comparative Aircraft Flight Efficiency Foundation. For 35 years, our nonprofit has supported the development and implementation of efficient, fuel efficient flight. And for the last decade or more now, we have turned our focus towards electric flight. In 2007, 13, or 13, yes, 13 years ago, we convened our first electric aircraft symposium. This annual conference brings together industry leaders to share the latest developments in electric aviation, reducing aviation's environmental footprint. In 2011, we hosted the NASA Green Flight Challenge at our flight test center in Sonoma County, California. The purse was 1.65 million, the largest prize in aviation history. Our mission is to advance the development of low emission flight by fostering and promoting early entry practical market opportunities. We focus on three areas, technology, promoting commercial implementation of cutting edge technologies, business and marketing, facilitating the communications strategies and market opportunities that support this industry's growth and success, and public education and advocacy. I know some of you in the room have been involved in this industry for a long time, and others of you are newcomers. Over the next few days, you'll hear from some of the best in the industry about what's happening now and what we can expect in the future. I want to thank each of our presenters for their efforts to be here to share their expertise with us, and of course, again, our partner, Vertical Flight Society. This symposium has a long-standing reputation of being an excellent opportunity to network within our industry. Please use the breaks and meals to network and to catch up with your fellow attendees. And now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Mike Hirschberg, who's executive director of the Vertical Flight Society. Mike took over at Vertical Flight Society as executive director on June 1st of 2011 after 20 years in the aerospace industry, primarily in vertical flight. As executive director, he's responsible for the execution of strategic direction set by the board of directors. He represents the vertical flight technical community and advocates for the advancement of vertical flight research and technology to the executive and legislative branches of government. 
He's the publisher of all of the Society's publications, including Vertiflight, the Journal of the American uh, Helicopter Society, and the annual forum proceedings, and I know there are more. <laughs> um, he was previously a principal aerospace engineer with Centra Technology. Uh, he uh, providing over 10 years of support to DARPA and the Office of Naval Research on advanced aircraft and rotorcraft concepts. Prior to this, he worked uh, in the Joint Strike Fighter Program Office. He's an internationally known lecturer and um, author or co-author of more, more than 100 publications on helicopter, VSTOL, and advanced aircraft developments. He holds a BS in Aerospace Engineering from University of Virginia, an ME in Mechanical Engineering from Catholic University of America. And he completed an MBA at Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University in 2013. Please welcome Mike. Vertical Flight Society, we were founded uh, originally as American Helicopter Society, but um, after many years of, of debate and discussion and uh, um, consideration. I was finally able to get the board to, to change the name of the of the society to the Vertical Flight Society, which is a better uh, explanation as to uh, to what to what we are. Um, okay, here we go. Um, so we're everything from uh, from micro vehicles through Joint Strike Fighter and kind of everything in between. Um, we're an educational nonprofit, so our our whole mission in life is to ed educate people and to advance vertical flight. Um, and it's a it's a great partnership with Cafe to be able to to uh, to collaborate and expand uh, you know our expertise and our knowledge and and help the electric uh, community electric uh, aviation community advance. Uh, mentioned um, some of the other things advocacy and uh, and uh, bringing the community to get together on different uh, important issues. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the different uh, things that we provide or different resources. So these are, um, uh, I'll go through some of these charts rather quickly, but you can refer to them later. But basically, you know, we are 75-year uh, uh, experts on vertical flight, and there's, uh, if you're interested in eCTOL, then, uh, sorry, eVTOL, then that's a, uh, we're a great resource. And can I just get a show of hands? So how many people would consider that they're really more eCTOL? Uh, you know, fixed wing, uh, horizontal takeoff and landing people, and uh, how many people are me more EV tall? Okay, and how many people feel they're pretty, pretty, both, pretty comfortable on both sides? Okay, good, excellent. All right. Um, so these, a lot of these resources will be more targeted towards. Uh, um, towards vertical flight, obviously. But um, so we have the Vertiflight Verti magazine, which has copies on all the tables. Uh, we have a technical journal, a world's only journal on uh, vertical flight. We had to keep the name uh, because of the way the scientific journals work. So it still is the, actually the Journal of AHS, even though we changed our name. Um, so we have lots of online resources. So there's a uh, professional um, uh, community of discussion boards and, and resources. So hover.vtol.org. Uh, we've been building a, a Vertipedia, so sort of the vertical flight encyclopedia. Um, we can use help on that. Uh, we have lots of photos, uh, career center, uh, STEM, pre-college outreach uh, website. We're trying to educate the world. Where's the receiver for this? Is this over here? Okay, uh, so we have a website we started. Um, the idea for this actually came from one of our board members, uh, Ken Schwartz, who will be speaking speaking later. Um, at the from the the uh, Uber Elevate, uh, the first summit in uh, um, April of 2017, I was like, you know, we really need to help other people see, you know, the public see what everything everything that's going on. And um, at the time, there was like I think about 10 or 12 different EV talk concepts out there, and you know, as it as it grew uh, to you know 15 and 18, it's like you know, I'm having a hard time keeping all these different designs straight. If we had a website or a directory, uh, then we could um, it'd be be easier to keep them straight. Um, so we also have these different uh, um, social media uh, outreach uh, efforts. Uh, we have a newsletter. Uh, we have um, lots of videos um, from our conferences. We have over 100 hours of of uh, lectures. Uh, as well as um, five short courses now on uh, on electric VTOL. Uh, as far as the website, uh, I updated this uh, uh, at the airport this morning. 
Uh, so um, we have almost 200 uh, aircraft captured on the, uh, in the aircraft directory, so I, uh, 191 is what I counted. This is a breakdown by the different uh, uh, categories, so uh, mostly uh, vectored thrust, but a lot of uh, lift plus crews, uh, uh, multi-copters, um, hover bikes, and flying devices, for instance, for the GoFly uh, competition. And there are now some electric uh, helicopters and electric uh, gyros as well. Uh, we have uh, over 200 uh, articles uh, online, as well as timeline maps, company directory, uh, links to the videos, et cetera. And uh, you know, we, we're cataloging everything, everything from the from the, uh, the everything from the the silly to the serious. Um, so we don't make any kind of uh, of um, value judgment on whether it's a practical design or not. So we just include everything. Okay, so. We have a long history of advocating for vertical flight, so we helped uh, set up different NASA and Army uh, organizations. Uh, when NASA closed the wind tunnels, the full-scale wind tunnels, we worked with, um, with the Army and uh, Air Force to get those transferred to DOD. Um, we did major, major foundational support to the Joint Strike Fighter program when it first started. That's how I got involved in, uh, in 1996 uh, on the JSF program. Uh, we've been a huge advocate for the tilt rotor over the decades um, and now providing major foundational support for uh, future vertical lift for the military and electric VTOL. So if you look at our, at our, at our history, at, the, at our first uh, banquet in 1944, uh, you can't see them there, but this is, you know, th this is the American Helicopter Society in 1944. Um, and you see, you know, the, the Igor Sikorsky and the different uh, leaders from Sikorsky and the Army and the different founders of, of the helicopter industry in America. At our um, first annual Electric VTOL workshop in 2014, you probably can't make out the faces, uh, but we got uh, Joe Ben Beavert, uh, there's Mark Moore, who was at NASA at the time, Todd uh, Hodges, uh, Bud Scriba, right here, he's wearing the same shirt. Uh, um, <laughs> And many, you know, there's Eric Allison uh, now at now, now at um, at uh, Uber. So a lot of the pioneers in the bottom photo, just like uh, just like in the top photo. And uh, it was really in uh, 2013, uh, Mark Moore, who was then at NASA. Uh, was you know telling me that there's this revolution coming, uh, so I said, well, all right, well let's uh, you know this is going to really advance vertical flight. Let's uh, let's get to it and start uh, working on uh, bringing the community together and to understand this and seeing how we can uh, work together together to advance this. So you've seen some of the different um, uh, the different conferences each year. Uh, most of them are, have been video recorded, uh, so they're online and available. Uh, our next, our, our next one will be in January of uh, 2023, uh, sorry, <laughs> January 2020 in, in San Jose. Uh, and um, we invite you guys to come. There's more information coming on that. Um, so Uber Elevate, uh, we've been supporting them since, uh, since the beginning. So they announced at, at a joint conference, the IPLC that we had with, with SAE in 2016. Um, I'm in the white paper as a contributor. Um, you know, we get, we get highlighted each of the summits with the, the, the V-Stall wheel or, um, or in other ways. Um, they're a corporate member and they help uh, teach a, uh, a short course that we have video recorded on aeromechanics and acoustics. Um, let's see. It's going to really slow things down. So a lot of people use the term uh, UAM um, and in, in, uh, synonymous with eVTOL, but we really uh, focus on the technology, being a technology organization, and, and feel that electric uh, aviation, which is why it's such a great uh, opportunity to talk at the Electric Aircraft Symposium and, and partner with, with uh, CAFE, uh, electric power enables all types of missions besides the air, uh, air taxi, urban air mobility, uh, mission. So that's you know, electric power for, for drones, um, things like GoFly, large, um, large cargo delivery, uh, personal air vehicles, urban air mobility, and even regional air mobility with um, hybrid, cap hybrid capability for longer range flights. All right, I'm going to have to say next slide. So next. 
Uh, so our magazine, uh, we do cover, we do still cover, cover helicopters and other rotorcraft, but these are some of the uh, issues we've had over the last uh, two years on uh, on eVTOL. So looking at the different types of disruptive technologies and approaches. Next, uh, and uh, the next slide. Uh, and the transformational capabilities that uh, that they uh, provide, both from everything, as you can see here, from uh, ultralight uh, EV tall to single passenger, uh, multi passenger for the Uber mission. Next. So, uh, can electric power be applied to um, helicopters? Well, um, it's been tried. Uh, so, this is the Sikorsky uh, Firefly, and in that picture, you see all the different. Uh, attempts, uh, sorry, all the different uh, hardware that comes out uh, if you switched, uh, converted um, uh, a helicopter from gas to, uh, to electric power. Um, so you got the engines, the transmissions, the gear shafts, um, fuel systems, everything. Of course, you got the big batteries on the other side, each side of them. And, and uh, they never actually flew it. Um, this was about 10 years ago now, and just the batteries weren't mature, and uh, they were having issues with uh, thermal management. Um, but there's lots of things that you can get rid of if you um, uh, don't try and do that electric power enables for a vertical flight that you can get rid of from a helicopter. So you can get rid of all the really expensive, complex, uh, heavy uh, pieces of, of uh, components. You know, the psycho collective and swash plate, the transmissions, gearboxes, shafting, hydraulic power, stuff like that. Uh, so you replace a single complex system with lots of really simple thrusters for um, distributed electric propulsion. Uh, but the key for efficiency is to get on the wing. So batteries don't have as much uh, energy density as gasoline. Uh, so if you compare it to a uh, helicopter, uh, it's not going to be as efficient uh, in hovering. But if you can get on the wing, you can get much longer range and, and higher speed. Um, and one of the really key enablers that electric uh, power provides for, uh, for eVTOL is noise. So the whole vision of urban air mobility is that your aircraft will be quiet enough that you can operate in, in high density city centers uh, and transport people where they are. So helicopters today are considered too noisy, uh, so they're pushed out uh, to where people aren't, basically. Um, and then for areas that are um, uh, emission sensitive, uh, also there's no tailpipe emissions, and depending on how you uh, create your energy, it may be uh, emission free. Uh, but basically, uh, let me just next slide. Um, you know, it, it, uh, electric power enables a whole new way of designing aircraft and looking at it, and it, not just, you know, in the transition from uh, horse and buggies to uh, cars, uh, they didn't just mechanize horses, right? I mean, somebody in China did it, but that's not what, what happened next. Uh, so it's really looking at a whole new, uh, whole new uh, paradigm in aircraft design. Next. Next. All right, so uh, uh, one of the great aviation pioneers, Otto Lilienthal, said, you know, to invent an aircraft is nothing, to build one is something, but to fly is everything. Well, he, you know, said that in 1896, so before there was, there were any actual aircraft. So for him, flying was every, everything. Uh, but there's a, lot, a few more stages after that, right? You have to uh, make it safe and reliable and, and have a compelling capability in the marketplace. You have to be, you know, you have to make money doing it. Otherwise, there's no reason to develop an aircraft if you're not going to make money. And uh, coming up with an efficient electric VTOL aircraft that will be uh, very profitable is really the, the challenge. Um, so next. Uh, so why do we need uh, almost 200 designs now? Next. Next. Uh, so a corollary to Otto Lilienthal's statement is, uh, you know, it's easy to design an aircraft if you don't know how. So you see a lot of designs that strain the bonds of incredulity. Uh, you know, how could somebody actually come up with a design like this? And, you know, maybe there's some stuff behind the curtain that we don't know about that maybe for some of the designs actually makes sense. Uh, but really the market is looking for something that's going to be, you know, the best the best designs, the ones that are going to be winners in the marketplace, the ones that are going to make a lot of money for their operators and end users. Uh, next. Uh, so there was a famous saying I learned in, uh, as a, as a uh, student, as an engineering uh, student. So if you want to end up with a small fortune in aerospace, you need to start out with a large one, right? 
because it takes a lot of money to develop an, an aircraft and lots of fortunes have been spent in developing or trying to develop uh, revolutionary technologies such as aircraft without actually succeeding. Next. All right, so why now? I mean, you guys know this, so advancements in electric motors, batteries, computer modeling, modeling and simulation, composites, low-cost manufacturing, this movement to performance regulations like with the Part 23, uh, lots of techni technology innovations, and, uh, and uh, investments. So you have, uh, you know, Elon Musk that's able to fund uh, uh, um, basically a private, uh, uh, private rocket ship to go to the space station. Uh, so there's a lot more money now that's uh, that's going into aviation, which is fantastic because in the last you know hundred years, most of the money that have, that's gone into aviation has either come from the, the OEMs, the companies themselves, uh, or for the government. So now we have really tech money going into aviation. Next. So this is uh, called the Gartner hype, hype cycle. Um, I think it applies very. Uh, very well for where we are with electric aviation and, and particularly electric VTOL. The, the, the eCTOL ideas don't seem to be as crazy as the, as the eVTOL ones. So, uh, but you know, every, every Joe Bob in his uh, you know, garage uh, you know, designs something on his computer or whatever and says, look, I've, I've reinvented the helicopter. This is the greatest thing since sliced slice bread. I'm, I'm gonna make billions with this design. So there's this self-perpetuating you know, peak of inflated uh, expectations. And just like the dot-com boom of the late 1990s, there's going to be a bust. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we're still going up that hype cycle. Uh, so next chart. So one of the things that we're trying to, OK, so there we are next. One of the things we're trying to do is kind of give a measured approach. Uh, you know, Designing aircraft shouldn't be left to amateurs. You know, it's not just a matter of, of slapping uh, uh, rotors onto a, a seat and saying, "Okay, you've you've got a, a quadcopter that you're going that people are going to be able to fly around uh, in." Right. So this needs, you know, uh, don't try this at home. <laughs> you need to have serious aviation experts uh, and and uh, technology experts on your team. Uh, you need a lot of money uh, and a lot of um, technical background in order to make your design succeed and, and again, to really succeed in the marketplace. So we're trying to uh, un make everybody understand the, the, the challenges and educate people and to, to bring people together to, to work on these, these different uh, uh, challenges. Next. Um, so I'm going to flip through some of these charts uh, a little faster, but um, these are for your references. So kind of there is a... Um, coalition of different um, concepts in uh, 2011 that, that flew, that showed different aspects, different uh, capabilities, uh, different approaches to getting uh, electric VTOL off the ground. Um, and it was very exciting for the world. Uh, not all that was known at the time, but very exciting. And, and I think it's, has, uh, it's kind of this, this um, maybe like the Big Bang, this was kind of the start of, uh, of the, at least from the experiment, experimental side, the start of uh, where we are today. Next. Okay, uh, so um, today uh, Uber's got um, six aircraft partners. Uh, I think you guys are all very familiar with these. Uh, Ryan, after me, will be talking about them uh, um, as, as well. Uh, next chart. Um, so there's really five key challenges with, a, with an urban air mobility uh, uh, approach um, and this, you know, for Uber's uh, uh, concept as well. So, I mean, in Uber's case, they're really pushing the, uh, the envelope uh, very aggressively to, to do um, flight demos next year and to be operational by uh, 2023. Um, and uh, they're also really pushing the envelope for, you know, they want all electric, so not hybrid, and five seats. So uh, in this case, uh, at least starting off, uh, a pilot and four passengers. Um, so it's very challenging time, very challenging technical requirements. Um, infrastructure, obviously the, the physical infrastructure to operate um, high voltage uh, electric powered aircraft and, and have the, the um, uh, the, the vertiports or skyports to be, you know, where they need to be and have everything they need to be to have an efficient, efficient operation and, and have the uh, regulatory approval to operate, uh, as well as the air traffic management uh, system. How do you operate these in the air? So the whole infrastructure piece. Uh, piece. Um, 
you know, eventually when they're flying, you know, 50,000 uh, aircraft a day or 100,000 uh, or per city, uh, you know, how do you get there uh, with the current, there's already a, a, there's already a pilot shor shortage. Um, eventually, obviously, we'll know we'll go to autonomous, but for in the meantime, you know, where do you get 50,000 pilots that you only need for five or 10 years and then they're replaced? So that's, that's a challenge. Um, and as I mentioned before, kind of the regulatory framework of uh, there's not yet really clear regulations on how to do electric VTOL. Um, and uh, so there's you know, lots of work going on that with Gamma and ASTM and S SAE, you'll hear about later. Uh, great work. Um, and then there's the public acceptance piece. Next. So, um, so we have a couple of things that we're working on to try and bring the community together. Um, so we have a workshop looking at what we see are the, really the, the defining challenges uh, infrastructure, um, system safety, uh, particularly for certification. You know, what do you, how can you design an aircraft that's going to be certifiable? Um, that's you know that's a challenge, um, and aerospace management as well. We have our seventh annual technical conference uh, on uh, on electric VTOL, um, so we have do have technical papers with that as well as we'll have a, a symposium, uh, which will have invited speakers. So I encourage you guys to if you're interested in learning more or participating more. Uh, to look at those two events. Next. Uh, we do also have an annual forum, which is the uh, world's largest vertical flight uh, conference. It's this year in, uh, oh, sorry, next year in Montreal, um, about 1,400 attendees, and we always have a whole day of uh, EV tall um, uh, panels and discussion as well as a, a short course. Next. So um, you guys are all invited to join the Vertical Flight Society, even if you're not interested in the vertical flight aspect. We think we still would have a lot of uh, benefits and um, you know networking uh, abilities and and there's a lot of technologies standards a lot of things that are uh, very complementary and similar for both vertical and uh, conventional takeoff and landing aircraft um, so thank you very much and I'll be here both days if anybody has any questions and we'll have our discussion panel afterwards thanks